Hello, I'm Wes Platt, Executive Editor of School Bus Fleet Magazine. Uh, welcome to the latest episode of The Route, our ongoing content series. Before we hit the road, be sure to follow and uh, connect with us on social media, and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you'll never miss an episode of The Route. For this episode, we're taking a spin through the October edition of School Bus Fleet Magazine. It's available in print and online at schoolbusfleet.com. Okay, let's get rolling. Our first stop is Georgia, where Gwinnett County Public Schools came in number one in our top district fleets list for 2021. Our survey in the October edition shows that Gwinnett, which was number three in 2019, moved up among responding districts despite cutting about 100 buses from its fleet down to 1,543. In the survey, Gwinnett reported increased bus service this year, moderate discomfort when it comes to the bus driver shortage, and higher starting hourly pay for bus drivers compared to last year. Second place this year goes to Wake County Schools in Raleigh, North Carolina. We'll go into more details from the survey in our November edition, so watch for that. Next, we make our way to California, where Vic Shao, the CEO of Ampli Power, talked with School Bus Fleet about the demands and challenges of electric vehicle infrastructure. Among other things, Shao noted that a major hurdle for school districts when it comes to fleet electrification is obviously cost. He says an electric school bus typically costs two to three times as much as a diesel bus. Uh, most school districts don't have this kind of money lying around to invest in electric buses. To help, the federal government recently announced it would provide funds to help districts transition to electric. Now let's head to Alabama, where our Amanda Huggett talked with Mobile County Public School Systems about their partnership with Blossman Gas to fuel more than 200 of its propane buses, hauling 26,000 students each year. She also talked to other districts around the country that shared Mobile's enthusiasm for renewable propane and the reduction of their carbon footprint. Our final stop is a virtual conference table where I had the chance to quiz leaders of electric school bus manufacturers in the United States and Canada. <clears throat> we talked about the current state of the market and the future that they see ahead. Trevor Rutterham of Bluebird thinks the market will continue its recovery into 2022, and he expects school districts to look for more ways to make use of their buses than just carrying precious cargo perhaps generating revenue, offsetting energy usage, or helping supply power during disaster response. Patrick Gervais of the Lion Electric Company says there's a great vibe for electric school buses right now, and he's looking forward to the new manufacturing plant coming to Joliet, Illinois, and a battery plant in Quebec. He doesn't think it's a matter of if districts are going electric, but how fast. Trish Reed of IC Bus says her company is working with suppliers to try to limit production disruptions caused by labor shortages and supply chain issues. But she thinks it's an exciting time for the industry as manufacturers improve power density, charging speed, and better EV infrastructure. Jed Routh of Th Thomas Built Buses hopes to see demand for buses bounce back as remote learning continues to dwindle in favor of in-class education. Still, he's realistic about supply chain issues, which may lead to demand outstripping supply in the short term. Chris Hebert of Collins Bus says he, it feels like the push from built up demand everyone expected at the end of 2020 is finally happening now, which is a good sign. Down the road, he anticipates electric bus costs dropping as technology becomes cheaper and more efficient for fuel cells and batteries. Ryan Shetterly of Green Power describes the market conditions for 2022 as completely unpredictable as states continue to battle COVID. Eventually, he hopes that the school bus duty cycle proves to be low-hanging fruit for electric bus manufacturers because he estimates that electric buses already can perform 90% of current school bus routes. Read more in the October edition, but also check out the expanded response posts on our website at schoolbusfleet.com. Well, time to park the bus for now, but I wanna hear from everyone who's coming along for the ride. Share your thoughts about this episode in the comments and absolutely subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of The Route. Reach out via email to west.platt at bobbit.com. Be sure to tweet us at schoolbusfleet. 
drive safely, and see you next time on The Route.